हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर अनिकेत पावनो जी एंड यू आर वाचिंग बेसिक केमिस्ट्री वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑन मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल थियोरी इन दिस वीडियो वी विल स्टडी सेलियंट फीचर्स और पॉस्टुलेट्स ऑफ मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल थियोरी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इफ यू हैव नॉट सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल क्लिक ऑन सब्सक्राइब टू गेट द रेगुलर अपडेट्स ऑफ माई न्यू वीडियोज Let's move to the molecular orbital theory. It was put forward by Hunt and Mulliken, and later it was developed by Leonard, Jones, and Colson. It is based on the theory known as linear combination of atomic orbitals, abbreviated as LCAO MO theory. Let's see what are the salient features of molecular orbital theory. The first is when two isolated atomic orbitals having similar energy and same symmetry. combined linearly with each other by linear combination of atomic orbitals two molecular orbitals are formed in short whenever two atomic orbitals they combine with each other two molecular orbitals are formed we will see what are those two molecular orbitals but let's understand with the help of an example for example these are the two orbitals of same element when they combine with each other the homonuclear diatomic molecule is formed for example hydrogen nitrogen oxygen chlorine etc if these atomic orbitals are of different element but if they have comparable energy they can overlap with each other and in this case the molecule which is formed is called as heteronuclear diatomic molecule for example carbon monoxide cyanide hcl nitric oxide and so on as we have seen when two atomic orbitals they combine with each other two molecular orbitals are formed the next postulate states that atomic orbitals of two atoms may be same or different as in the first case we have seen they may be homonuclear diatomic molecule or heteronuclear diatomic molecule they are represented by wave functions psi a and psi b capital a and capital b are for the atomic orbitals for example these are psi a and psi b wave functions of atomic orbital a and atomic orbital b when they combine with each other with additive overlap or positive overlap it results into a bonding molecular orbital represented by psi small b this bonding molecular orbital has low energy and high stability the second possibility is these atomic orbitals can combine with each other with subtractive overlap or negative overlap in case of subtractive overlap the molecular orbital which is formed is called as anti bonding molecular orbital abbreviated as psi a this molecular orbital has high energy and low stability so what we have seen is the bonding molecular orbital is formed by additive overlap or positive overlap that is psi b is equal to psi a plus psi b and anti bonding molecular orbital is formed by subtractive overlap or negative overlap that is psi a is equal to psi a minus psi b Let's understand this diagrammatically. On the left hand side we have increasing energy. On the two sides we have atomic orbitals of atom A and atom B. When they combine with each other, two molecular orbitals will be formed, out of which one will be bonding called as bonding molecular orbital having low energy, high stability, and the other is anti bonding molecular orbital having high energy, less stability. In this way when two atomic orbitals they combine with each other two molecular orbitals are formed out of which one is bonding and one is anti bonding if three atomic orbitals overlap with each other three molecular orbitals will be formed out of which one will be bonding one will be anti bonding and the last will be non bonding if four atomic orbitals they combine with each other four molecular orbitals will be formed out of which two will be bonding and two will be anti bonding In this way if n number of atomic orbitals they overlap with each other n molecular orbitals will be formed out of which half will be bonding and half will be anti bonding a bonding molecular orbital is represented by an equation psi b is equal to psi a plus psi b if we take the square of this equation it results into psi b square is equal to psi a square plus 2 psi a psi b plus psi b square 
psi b square is called as electron probability density. Electron probability density or electron charge density in the bonding molecular orbital. Whereas psi a square and psi b square indicate the electron charge density in the isolated atomic orbital. We can see that when there are two atomic orbitals, the second equation is greater than the first equation by the amount 2 psi a psi b. This means that electron charge density in the bonding molecular orbital is greater by 2 psi a psi b than the sum of the electron charge densities in the isolated atomic orbitals. The increase in the electron charge density between the two positive nuclei shields the two nuclei from mutual repulsion that is due to increase in electron charge density the two nuclei are attracted towards each other. That is due to increase in electron charge density between the two nuclei the two nuclei are attracted towards each other and it results into a formation of stable bond. As the bond formed is stable the energy of the system decreases and increases the stability of the system. In case of antibonding molecular orbital, it is represented by an equation psi a is equal to psi a minus psi b. If we take the square of this equation, it results into psi a square is equal to psi a square minus 2 psi a psi b plus psi b square. Psi a square is the electron probability density in antibonding molecular orbital, whereas psi a square and psi b square are electron charge densities into the isolated atomic orbitals. In this case, we can see that electron probability density is less than electron charge density by the amount 2 psi a psi b. The decrease in the electron charge density occurs in the region lying in between the two positively charged nuclei. The decrease in electron charge density between the nuclei means that there is no shielding of the nuclei that is due to the decrease in electron charge density between the nuclei these are repelled from each other. That is due to the decrease in electron charge density or zero electron density between the two nuclei. These nuclei are repelled from each other and it results in the formation of unstable bond or we can say that no bond formation is possible. Hence energy of the system increases and stability of the system decreases. To understand this concept, let's plot a graph of internuclear distance versus electron charge density. Here HA and HB are the waves of two atomic orbitals that is represented by a wave functions psi A and psi B. We can see that these two waves are in phase with each other. As these waves are in phase with each other, the electron charge density or the electron probability density in case of bonding molecular orbital is concentrated at the center between the two nuclei. As there is maximum electron density between the two nuclei, these electrons can participate in bonding and it results into a bonding molecular orbital. In case of antibonding molecular orbital, the waves of atomic orbitals are out of phase. As the waves of atomic orbitals are out of phase, in case of antibonding molecular orbital, there is zero electron density between the two nuclei. As there are no electrons to participate in bonding, the two atomic orbitals cannot overlap with each other to form a molecular orbital. And hence, in case of antibonding molecular orbital, the place where there is zero electron density, it is called as node point. Hence, in case of antibonding molecular orbital, no bond is formed. Now let's see how the two s orbitals they combine with each other to form molecular orbitals. If these are the two s orbitals, they can combine with each other with positive overlap and it will cause a shielding of the nuclei and it results into a sigma bonding molecular orbital represented by sigma s. When these two s orbitals they combine with each other with subtractive overlap, it results into a sigma antibonding molecular orbital represented by sigma star s. As there is zero electron density between the two nuclei, there is a presence of nodal plane between the two nuclei or node point. In the same way, when S and Pz orbital, they combine with each other, in case of additive overlap, it results into a bonding molecular orbital represented as sigma Spz. In case of antibonding molecular orbital, it is called as sigma star Spz. Let's understand how the pz orbitals they overlap with each other. Now in case of p orbitals, we know that these orbitals are ungirate in nature. That means there is a presence of nodal plane at the center. And when these orbitals they overlap with additive overlap, it results into a sigma bonding molecular orbital 
represented by sigma pz in case of subtractive overlap it results into an antibonding molecular orbital that is sigma star pz we can see that in case of antibonding molecular orbital there is one more nodal plane at the center of the orbitals in case of s and pz orbitals they combine with themselves with axial overlap therefore it results into a sigma type of orbitals when the atomic orbitals they overlap with each other with lateral overlap it results into a pi bonding and anti bonding molecular orbitals let's understand this in case of px or py orbitals when there are two px or py orbitals and they overlap laterally with additive overlap it results into a bonding molecular orbital it is called as pi bonding molecular orbital represented by pi px or pi py when these orbitals they combine with themselves with negative or subtractive overlap it results into a pi anti bonding molecular orbital pi star px or pi star py in case of p orbital there is already a presence of one nodal plane and in case of anti bonding molecular orbital there is one more extra nodal plane now let's see what are the necessary conditions to be satisfied by atomic orbitals to combine together to form molecular orbitals the first condition is the combining atomic orbitals must have the same or almost same energy for example if there are two 1s orbitals of same element they do have same energy and therefore they can combine with each other to form bonding or anti bonding molecular orbitals but if there is one 1s orbital and there is other 2s orbital they cannot overlap with each other therefore 2s orbital will remain non bonding however if 1s orbital and 2s orbital are of different elements and if they have comparable energy they can overlap with each other to form bonding and anti bonding molecular orbital the second condition is the combining atomic orbitals must be able to overlap to the maximum extent to form molecular orbitals for example if these are the two orbitals they should overlap with each other to maximum extent so that a molecular orbital is formed greater is the extent of overlap greater will be the electron density in the region between the nuclei and stronger will be the bond formed between them the third condition is the combining atomic orbitals must have same symmetry for example if there are four types of orbitals s pz px or py s orbital can combine with s or pz orbital for the axial overlap but it cannot combine with px or py orbital in case of lateral overlap in case of axial overlap as in case of methane where all sigma bonds are formed s orbital can combine with px or py to form axial bonds but it cannot combine with px or py laterally we will understand this concept on the next slide in the similar fashion pz orbital can combine with pz px can combine with px py can combine with py but pz orbital cannot combine laterally with px or py orbital in the similar fashion px cannot combine with pz or py orbital and py orbital cannot combine with pz and px orbital let's have an example to understand this for example if there are s or px py orbitals to overlap laterally they will overlap in this fashion we can see that the upper part is positive overlap whereas the lower part is negative overlap in this case the positive overlap on the upper side is exactly cancelled by the negative overlap on the lower side a similar things happens when pz orbital combined with px or py orbital in this case the positive overlap at the top is cancelled by negative overlap at the bottom and hence there is no chance of formation of a bond that is how we have seen that when there are two atomic orbitals they can combine with each other to form two molecular orbitals out of which one is bonding one is anti bonding if there are three atomic orbitals to combine with each other three molecular orbitals will be formed out of which one will be bonding molecular orbital second will be anti bonding molecular orbital and third will be non bonding molecular orbital if there are four atomic orbitals to overlap with each other four molecular orbitals will be formed out of which two will be bonding and two will be anti bonding in this way if there are n number of atomic orbitals to overlap with each other n number of molecular orbitals will be formed out of which half will be bonding and half will be anti bonding at the last we have seen that if the atomic orbitals they do not combine with each other with the same symmetry or same energy 
the orbitals will remain non-bonding. So these are what the salient features or postulates of molecular orbital theory in simple words. If you like my video, click on like, do share and subscribe my channel. Hit the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos. If you want to ask something, mention it in the comment box and keep watching basic chemistry. Thank you.